Welcome to our authentication module. When we talk about authentication, we are talking about the process where an individual must prove their identity. The individual claims to be a certain person, typically by providing a username. We then must verify that they are actually the individual who holds that identity. There are several ways we can do this. The first way we can do this is by using something the user knows. The most common something you know type of authentication is a password. We could also use something that a user has, such as a token or some other type of device that will allow us to verify that the individual is who they claim to be. We can also have something you are. This is something that makes up a person, such as a fingerprint or an other biometric, such as an iris scan or perhaps a voice print authentication. And our fourth type of implementation option is somewhere you are. Here we use a geographical location to identify a user or to identify an anomaly or a new location that a user may not usually log in from. When we talk about two-factor authentication, this is where we're using two of these four methods of authenticating a user. By using more than one factor of authentication, we are increasing our security. You may also hear the term multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication means we're using three or more of these types of implementations. For example, something that a user knows, something that a user has, and something that a user is, such as a password, a token, and perhaps a fingerprint. When we talk about mutual authentication, this is where we have two-way authentication, where the user is authenticating themselves to a server, and the server is authenticating themselves back to the user. This is typically done with digital certificates to verify identity, and it ensures that both the user and the server trust each other and can exchange information safely and securely. Something that the user knows is the most common way of authenticating to a system. The most common form of this authentication is a password. The user will enter a secret word on their keyboard to authenticate us into a system. Some users will use passphrases, which is a combination of words and spaces. Passphrases are typically more secure than passwords because they are generally longer. A PIN or personal identification number is generally a numeric password used to access a system. We also have personal history questions. These are typically used for password resets if you don't remember your password. Questions like, what was my first pet's name or what was my first job? These are also known as cognitive recognition. We also have graphical interpretation. A CAPTCHA is a graphical identifier which is presented to a human and only a human should be able to read the characters. This is typically done to ensure that a robot is not attempting to log in multiple times and to verify that there's an actual person sitting at the computer. The user will be able to read the digits, letters, or combination in a box uh, overlaid over an image and be able to enter those digits to prove that they are a human because a computer would not be able to decipher the characters. Users can also select an image as part of their authentication. They would be presented with a series of images and only the actual user would know which image to click. Something the user has is typically a physical device that the user is holding that they use to authenticate themselves into a system. So this could be a token pin device which is designed to provide the user with a one-time pin that they can use to log into the system. There are two types of token PIN devices. The first type is synchronous or time-based one-time password devices. These devices are based on a specific time and the server knowing the PIN that will be displayed on the device at a specific time. Users can simply look at the, the PIN number on the screen of their device and enter that into the system to log on. You also have asynchronous token PIN devices. Here, a user is presented with a challenge. They enter that challenge into their PIN device, and the PIN device will then display a PIN that they can use to log into the system. A digital certificate is another example of something that a user has. A digital certificate can be used to identify a user, and this could either be installed on the user's computer or perhaps in a smart card that they're carrying with them. This is common in military applications. 
Smart cards and memory cards are also ways to identify a user. These are devices that they can carry around with them. The main difference between a smart card and a memory card is that a smart card contains a microprocessor, and this microprocessor is able to process information and perform tasks. The memory card simply stores information. The primary advantage of the something the user has authentication mechanism is that if they lose it, you can simply revoke that device and provide them with a new device to ensure that any unauthorized individuals who find the device are not able to use it. Biometrics, or something that a user is, is becoming more popular with modern systems. Here we are attempting to verify an individual's identity by using some type of unique physical attribute that is part of the user. Biometrics are typically very sophisticated and can be very expensive. There are several different types of biometrics that we can use to identify an individual. These include technologies which utilize the user's hand, such as their fingerprint, a palm print, hand geometry, or hand topology. We can also use the individual's face, such as with a facial scan, where a camera looks at the user's picture and determines if the structure of the face matches the authorized user. We can also use an individual's eyes with a retina scan or an iris scan. We can also use other types of biometrics such as signature dynamics. You can use a signature pad and have the user sign their name, and these types of technologies are able to look at the way a user signs their name. We also have keyboard dynamics, where we look at how a subject enters keys on a keyboard. For example, if the user every day enters their password one character at a time very slowly because they are not a very good typist, and then another day the password is entered very rapidly, this would trigger an alert with keyboard dynamics indicating that it may not be the same person entering the password even though the password is correct. We can also use voice print technology to listen to an individual's voice and those distinguishing characteristics in order to determine if they are the appropriate user and whether or not access should be granted. Our final type of authentication is somewhere a user is. This is also known as fourth factor authentication. Here we are attempting to verify a user's identity based on a physical or logical location of the user or the device they are using to connect to a system. We can use this as part of our multi-factor authentication to increase security. An example here is devices can be configured to operate within a specific geographical boundary. We often see this on websites that use geolocation technology to determine the physical location where an IP address resolves to. When you attempt to log into a site from a new city, the system will ask you for additional verification to ensure that an unauthorized individual has not obtained your password and is now attempting to log in as you. This concludes our authentication module. Thank you for watching.